What's up, everybody? This is Something You Should Know Podcast. I'm Brian. I am Johnny. <laughs> it's, always funny. I was, it's always funny. John. <laughs> I'm always expecting you to say Jonathan. But uh, it's episode 14. And my song, let's start with the song of a week. Uh, you want to go first? Uh, yeah. Um, the, power, the Powers That Be by Zach Hill, MC Ride, and Flatlander. And that's that's death. Also grips. known as the death grips. <laughs> Funny. Is that what you've been into lately? Yeah. Grip for. I know you. Re- I know you've always really liked them, but. Yeah. yeah. Um, my song of the week is uh, "It's Your World" by Common. Um, off his B album. You said that dropped early two thousands. Like early, maybe late two thousand. I think like mm-hmm. two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Was that his prime? Was that Common's prime? Person. Uh. No, I think that's his classic, but okay. I think I really liked Early Common when he first came out. I think he has like two, maybe three classics, but I think it was B, and then I think B was the end of his prime to me. Oh, really? Yeah, because I feel yeah. like B was his classic and full complete album, off. and then after that, he he started having like songs that were really good instead of whole albums. Yeah. Slowly and slowly, so yeah. Um, I want to start, I want to start off today with, um, oh yeah, so last week when we were talking about, uh, who we want to, what albums we want to use to battle each other, we chose to use artist Ramirez, both his albums, The Great Gorilla and The Player's Manual. Yeah. Um, what, how'd you get introduced to Ramirez? I'm pretty sure it was through Suicide Boys, probably like on a feature, mm-hmm. or it might've been, uh. An album slash mixtape called The Grey Gods 2. And, like, I just heard him through there. And then after that, I just kept seeing him, like, pop up in that whole, like, underground scene with, like, uh, Puya, mm-hmm. and, like, Fat Nick. Uh, Shake Well is on one, one of the good songs on uh, The Play's Manual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, you? How'd you find out? My friend Zach put me on. Or you mm-hmm. know Zach, but yeah. Zach put me on. He was just playing it one time in his car, and he was just like, oh, this dude, um, he signed to, um, is it G-Star 59? Uh, just G- G-59. G-59, G-59, yes. G-59, yeah. So he signed to, uh, so he told me when he signed it, G-59. He told me he's from the Bay and everything. Mm-hmm. And then, sorry, I listened to him. Sorry, messing with him a little bit. Um, so some other information I found online. He's a Mexican Nicaraguan rapper. He's Nicaraguan? From, yeah, both. Nicaraguan. Yeah, hey, I can Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, he's from SF, and he's on. Uh, he signed to G Five Nine about Suicide Boys. Yep. Um, how do you feel about the Great Gorilla? Um, the Great Gorilla was dope. I liked. Uh, I think I have three songs liked from the off the album. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it's just bars, dope flows. Um. Do you do you remember any of the song names? But uh, I thought it was dope. I thought it compared to the plays manual. Um, in a way that it was more so just uh, raps. Mm. Um, but the plays manual was kind of like a concept, I guess. Especially with the album title, like mm-hmm. the plays manual was very, was very groovy and like. I don't know. Sexual, sensual, I guess. And like a lot of the songs are very like I guess that, yeah. Like mm-hmm. uh is it R and B? R and B ish? Um no. I got a different kind that's of like word. vibe that's from it. it. It was very groovy. I don't know. That's what I got from it. Uh I think we'll get to that. But um I think with Grey Gorilla, I really liked it. Um I feel like that that project, the great uh, great gorilla project, is. Um, I hear like the I don't know if I want to say influence, but I hear the uh, chemistry he would mm-hmm. have he has with the Suicide Boys. Yeah, definitely. They kind of this album has that Suicide Boys sound, but it also has that has his own sound to it. Mm-hmm. He's got his own like flow and all that to it. And I think um, that that comes from the Three Six Mafia. Oh yeah, like the, mm-hmm. the style. Yeah. So um, that's why I really like the Grey Gorillas. I really like Be a Witness with Shake Well. I think UGK was really good too. Um, Blunt and Great Gods. I really like Great Gods. 
Yeah, great guys is dope too. Yeah. Um, I think I think my only knock of this album was started sounding. Oh, actually, no, my only knock with this one is it's a personal kind of a personal thing. Mm-hmm. I don't really like when I'm listening to someone and they kind of remind me of someone else. Yeah. And with I this agree. one, it just reminds me too much of Suicide Boys. Mm-hmm. And it's like I want to hear more of Ramirez. Yeah. Like what's Ramirez about and him. Um, so that was my only knock on this one. It's more they like, are on the same label. But speaking of same labels, let's say let's say Top Dog Entertainment. Yeah. That's the label, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm guessing you would say that a lot of the artists on Top Dog Entertainment don't sound like each other. Nah, yeah. They don't? They don't. I would okay. say they don't. Um Let's just go with the rappers, you know, the yeah. the guys, because um, this is R and B. I don't know any of them that sound like Absol, to be honest. Yeah. Um, J- Absol's like they're more, especially the content he talks about. It's more intricate. It's more like third eye type shit. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. trippy shit. Um, so that's how he's distinct from everybody else. Um, Isaiah Rashad, to me. The closest person I think he sounds closest to is Kendrick. That's just because they really? both have distinct voices. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. it. That, that's the only, like, connection I would say with them. But besides that, like, he's... What's the word? I don't want to say simp because simp's more sad, but he's more of, like... what? He's a little bit darker than mm-hmm. everybody else, yeah, I would say. Yeah. And his voice being, like, his voice being his voice, it gives him that distinction. Um, yeah. Q and J-Rock are more... Actually, Q's gone through phases. So that's, that's why really, like, yeah. Q's gone through phases. Like, he had his, like, I don't even know if I want to call it, like, like, with Oxymoron, I don't know if I would call that gangster rap. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I think, I think I would call that gangster rap, but it was a little, yeah. it was a little, a little bit different. But then, like, his newer stuff, it's different than his older stuff. Um, then J-Rock's just more another, same thing. He's, like, he's their gangster rap, their, gang, uh, gang, mm-hmm. gangster rap, their, blah, blah. Why am I saying rap, their Shout out to Toronto Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> Not, <laughs> um, you know that that's J Rock's uh J Rock shit, and then Kendrick sounds like Kendrick. Like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know which one of them. Did yeah, Kendrick start? Zeta. Nah, it was, was... J when J Rock, and really? then Kendrick Q came on came next, mm-hmm. and then they brought Absol, and then Isaiah Rashad and SZA came later. Yeah, yeah. Do you think anyone sounds like similar? To TD, um, no. But I guess what I'm thinking of, or what I just realized, is like a difference with them and Suicide Boys and Ramirez is like Suicide Boys and Ramirez are kind of underground, so they kind of mm. have this like general, overall underground sound, compared to like uh, Kendrick and TDE. Mm-hmm. It's like kind of mainstream. They all have their own. I guess that's just more of a status thing, mm-hmm. but uh. Yeah, I guess that's why they kind of have the same. I think sound so. like you're seeing you're seeing the same sound because it's like an underground sound. Mm-hmm. But like opinion. I've heard, I've heard other underground music and yeah. Suicide Boys always, like you said, they have very big influence from Three Six Mafia. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Suicide Boys, they have a little bit of a darker production. Yeah, definitely. and especially yeah. with the I think it's Scrim, right? Scrim's yeah. voice makes it a lot more darker. Yeah. And so I feel like Suicide Boys in the underground scene, I would say, have have in, in the underground scene they are, they're kinda distinct as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but I think I feel like this one might have just been just production. Production, production wise. Was... Production wise might have just been a little bit too close to like the Su- yeah. what Suicide Boys are used to. Which would make sense because like it's probably in house, like the producers yeah. like that they use and all yeah. that. I um, like seeing uh all the producers' names that uh, like underground artists use because a lot of them have this, the same producers because they get like the because usually they don't I don't know if they pay for them they probably do mm-hmm. but uh, it's dope seeing like common producers uh, being used mm-hmm. like for s- certain artists yeah. like an artist that I can think of is uh, Bones he uses a lot of his uh, group Group beats, mm. like his collective beats, and uh, a lot of just similar similar producers for a lot of his songs. Um, 
Yeah, that's about all I got on Great Gorilla. Um, how do you so? Uh, did you already say how you feel about the players' manual? Uh, I thought it was really groovy. Yeah, you thought it was uh, conceptual and all that. Um, what I really got from it was it kind of gave me an old, an old. I don't know if I'd call it old school, but gave me really old barrier. Mm-hmm. Um, it did feel old school. Yeah, yeah, a little old school barrier uh, like sound about, like, to it. Driving on hundred spokes. Yeah, like yeah, yeah like like that. And stuff like that. Yeah. It really gave me uh like E forties uh, Charlie Hustle and in in a major way, mom and then like the synthesizer it was using was very like mob yeah. music type. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason the reason I really like this was knowing that Ramirez is from the Bay and all that, mm-hmm. and it kind of just it kind of just fit in, especially the concept with the yeah. uh, what was the radio dude? He was like, I'm the hostess with the mostest Daddy Long Dick. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy long stroke. I long stroke. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like that, that shit was hella funny. Um, so I really liked this one. It really was. It was, it was, it was, it was, uh, it really gave me that. I feel like they're both very different also. Like Greg Rill yeah. is a little bit more hype to me. Yeah. A little yeah. more hype, like buddy in a mosh pit real quick. Definitely. Um, the player's manual was very, you know, probably like smoke a blunt. Yeah. And like go go on a long drive, just chill. Yeah. Um, I think my only knock of the player's manual was towards the end it started just sounding a little repetitive production wise. I agree. Again. Yeah. Like but was... besides that, it was yeah. I really like the producer Rocky. Rocky. Rochi. I think it's Rochi. Rochi. Yeah, Rochi. Um, yeah. He was um did he who was his name on every song? Uh, well, it wasn't on every song, but he was him and Ramirez did the whole project. Okay, okay. so yeah, yeah. So he was dope. I, I he was just featured on some of the songs. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and he's from Florida. Oh, okay. So that was surprising too. Yeah. Um, which one do you like better, or which one do you think has the most replay value to uh, you? Definitely the plays manual. Just the grooviness and the features. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a uh, really chill. It's like can be chill. Mm-hmm. Some of the later songs are really like they get more aggressive, mm-hmm. but that's just his uh, style, you know. Yeah, it's his thing. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I can't really say which one has the most replay value because, like I said, they're mm-hmm. both they're both a little bit different. They're both in their own separate lane. Yeah. Um, that's a good thing, I think. Yeah, I, artists, I like yeah. that. I like that better. Um, me personally, as of right now, I like uh, the players' manual more mm-hmm. for the same reasons you said. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot chiller, and I haven't really listened to music that really giving me that like old school barrier sound in a while. So it was refreshing to hear all yeah. that. Um, that's about all I got on him. What about same? Yeah. Oh, were you a big fan of him? Um, not really. Mm-hmm. Um, I had known about him for a while just mm-hmm. because of Suicide Boys. Um, but that's I've never like. I'd say the Grey Gorilla album and uh, mainly that one and like his features were all I knew basically. I just knew about him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I really like him. But uh, that's all I got. What about you? Uh, same. Uh, My bad. So another thing I want to talk about was Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden. Um, have you been keeping up with anything? With uh, anything political? Kind of. Hella hit my head. Ow. <laughs> just on the mic. <laughs> yeah. You can focus the camera on me for that one. Oh, no, no, no. Just dodge it. Shut up. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I, uh, I have you been keeping up with anything, any of that at all? Kinda, I kind of just know a lot of. He's come off. Wasn't he like a straight up pedophile? <sighs> like damn near straight up creep. Like just touching on like little kids' heads and shit. Like while he's yeah. in public, it's crazy. Yeah, they they've. He's he's odd. Yeah, he's an odd old man. That's crazy. How <laughs> I, I'm surprised he hasn't been called out more by that. That kind of stuff should be put on like. Um. News channels, in my opinion. Um, like obviously the news channels would probably get fucked over by politicians and lobbyists and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That's the kind of stuff that needs to be put out. Like, like, pol- I, like people. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. But I understand it. Like yeah. to put something out like that, you really need you need proof, evidence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause the sun not not to everybody that not everyone in in the world thinks. Because he's putting his hand, um, yeah. like the way he's doing, like yeah, yeah. his his actions are. I won't even call him like anybody with the right I, mind. I feel like I think <laughs> I, th- I think calling him a pedophile is kind of like fucked up though. Like, 
Because isn't yeah. well, isn't pedophilia? We don't know if it's, it's, it's not the action. Of, I've said the hella wrong, but isn't that the um like the action of like like a sexual doing, act. yeah a sexual yeah. act? Okay, so that's what I mean. Yeah, like, that's I agree. Yeah. Or I think it is. It's just like I think I think it's a uh, he shows pedophile tendencies. Yeah, some some something like that. But like there, we don't know if he's actually done it yeah so so it's like like, that's why it can't be on the news because there's no proof about it and that's just you know that's just wild um but yeah not going on i mean we might as well talk about it like yeah he's he's weird he's actually caught he actually has a case right now with the uh for um rape Uh, against a minor no an old worker oh really Mm mm-hmm Bro, politics is another crazy. It's like, crazy. There's so much subject. abuse of just power, abuse of power, corruption. Yeah. Just especially with this whole Corona shit. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know if you saw like this politician right before a bill was about to be passed or a new law. Apparently, he had hella stocks and he like sold them off. And the next day, the stock market just started crashing. So it's like what? they <laughs> they know the in, they know the inside scoops on shit. Yeah, and like of course, it's just, it's just a lot. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Mm-hmm. It's like, and I remember when I heard that, when I saw that on the news, it just fucking. It made me realize like how how high up they really are. Yeah. How high up government officials really see mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. Especially when they're that high up. Yeah. It's like, damn, like it just reminds me of you know when like people say we're in a dome or whatever, and people were like on the outside controlling yeah. us and shit. It reminds me of that, but in like a. <laughs> Country type of way. Yeah. I was like, yeah, they can just make things happen. They just know the secrets of a greater community, you know? Like, mm-hmm. let's say, like, we, certain people know things that go on in their neighborhood. Yeah. In their community that they live in. Yeah. yeah, but, like, government people know their fucking secrets of the whole damn country of mm-hmm. the whole world, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, they're connected. Oh, yeah, because they're, they're overseas and everything. Yeah. It's just a, at a much greater scale. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just connected with everybody around the world Mm -hmm. that knows or people of power you know Mm -hmm. they know shit um i think for me i don't really trust biden to be honest um i know he was a big contributor to to like the school to prison pipeline um i don't i just don't trust him so if he does win the election he has to build that trust and he has to prove himself yeah for me um but yeah, um, let's see. I heard he changed his mind on, on what he said about uh, marijuana. He said like it was a gateway drug and like, like a bunch of bad stuff. And like I think recently he said that it's dumb that people are getting locked up for. Mm-hmm. I know he said uh, they should get people should get rehabilitation or re- go to rehab instead of going to prison for weed because it's cheaper to go to rehab than it is to put people in prison. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like. See, what, that's that's the reason I don't trust Biden is like when he gets on TV or these yeah. radio shows and all of this, is Switches he up hella quick. is when it, when he's behind the camera, it's like, oh yeah, this cost this is cheaper. They should go to rehab. They shouldn't be going to jail. This is not. But then it's his actions that show, or like the other when he doesn't talk with the mm-hmm. camera in his face, it's he just comes off as like iffy about it. He doesn't come off full like yeah, that's that's what I support. That's what I want to go with. Yeah. Um. So, but I know I know him and Bernie have been talking a little bit, and Bernie's been swaying him a couple ways. I think the last thing I heard tips. about him for uh, huh? He's giving him tips. Bernie Sanders giving well, Bernie Joe well, because well, if Joe wants to win, he's gonna need a lot of Bernie supporters. Are they both Democrats? Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's not so yeah. like yeah, but I think one of the things I saw that I'm I was happy to see. I think Biden said he's not gonna do the free college that Bernie wanted to do, but he would do a cap to like. Free college to a family that makes under a hundred thousand. Yeah, something like that. So it's stuff like that. He'll say it, so it's more of like, all right, let's let's see action mm-hmm. at that point if you are gonna do it. Um, so yeah, so I just think he has a lot of more work to do. Um, the black vote was talked about a lot in this interview with the. This is off the Breakfast Club interview, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think the Democratic Party takes the black vote for granted? I think about that. And, uh, and I'm asking them in the, the sense Democratic of... The Democratic Party takes the black vote for granted. So, like, it's just they they know whoever they put 
as their candidate, they know they'll always get the majority of black vote. That's what I mean by oh, take for granted. Oh, just because they're Democrats. Yeah. Um, maybe, yeah. But I know there are still black people that vote for Republicans. Like, mm-hmm. even like, like blacks for Trump, women for Trump, like that. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even. If I was a woman or black, I would not vote for Trump. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like. I get that. Yeah. Um. Uh, I think I think they as a party they do, but also I need to I need to understand more about the history of the black vote a little bit more because I know I need to know before prior to uh 2008 to when Obama came in because mm-hmm. from what I've heard is the black vote wasn't re- people like the black community wasn't really voting as much before Obama yeah before Obama mm-hmm. and then from what I've heard read was like once Obama came to office like they started voting yeah. And then after that, it was, they started voting for Obama. And then this last election with Hillary, I think, I think they, they got majority. I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it. Yeah. But if that is true, that after Obama, after the spike in, you know, the black community voting uh, Democrat and the following of it, I feel like there's been instances where it looks like they're taking it for granted mm-hmm. because... I feel like there's so many. I feel like there's so many aspects to it. It's like the, there's that stigma of if you're Republican, then you're racist, or yeah. like like kind of what you said, like if I'm black or if I'm woman, like I wouldn't vote for Trump. Yeah. Wasn't Joe Biden saying some stuff um, about if you if he was black or if you are black, then what do you say? Like oh, at the end of it, he said if you're not voting for me, you're not black. No, he said if you're. If you're even questioning voting for, if you're even thinking about, if you're even questioning voting for Trump or me, then you're not black. Oh, if you're debating it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's how he, bro, it was crazy. That's how he ended off his interview. Yeah. And then Charlamagne kind of let him just have it. He was yeah, just yeah. like, he was, I'm not even he was like, argue with that he was logic. Just, yeah. And then he would, I think he did say something though. He was just like, it's not that, it's not that we want to vote for Trump or something like that, but we do want things to be done for our community. Yeah. Which I is, think that he's going to do that. Yeah. Which is a big thing, which I think, I kind of feel like the Democratic Party kind of looks at the black community as kind of a following community. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, maybe Biden was saying that just because he's a Democrat, so he feels like they should get the, the black vote. But he's just hella cocky, too. Like, yeah, I don't know if you're talking... coming off really cocky on that interview. That's what I mean. Like, that's just not good. Because Hillary was the same way. Hillary would say shit like that, mm-hmm. too. And it's just like, what what the fuck are you saying? Yeah. And that's why I feel like, like they've shown little things. Yeah, entitlement yeah. of this is what we got. <laughs> and Biden's hella cocky about it just because, yeah. like, he ran with Obama. Yeah. And then, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> that's, I forgot about that. Yeah. Bro, Biden's just, uh, he's just too much. Like, even, like, during the debates with Bernie, like, he would always try to take credit for everything that Obama was doing because he was his what VP. What the fuck, yeah. And then this one time, he was just like, Obama, Obama got me to go get the black vote. I was like, yeah. all right. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, okay. No, this does not make sense. And I'm just yeah. like, nah. Like, come on now. Um, how does that come off to you, though, His con- that confidence? Because I, I was trying to think about it. I was like, okay, is, should he have that confidence with the black vote, or is he just, is it too cocky now? Because to me, it looked like it he was being too cocky. cocky. He's still carrying, like, that energy he has, that feeling of security he has from being with Obama, I mm-hmm. feel like. Right. But now that he's not with them, like, his... His true self is being like exposed, you know. Like mm-hmm. Obama's not there to have his back, mm-hmm. you know, because that's all it was for Biden. That's how. That's how. That's why he thinks he's like positively viewed because mm-hmm. uh, he was with Obama. Mm-hmm. Um, but now he doesn't have that. Yeah, so. exactly. So, and. I don't know. Even like Charlamagne was mentioning, it's like the black community wants you to have a black woman VP. Yeah. Like that, that's what he was just like sharing. Mm-hmm. He was just like, I'm open to it. We're talking to a bunch of people, um, but I'm not going to. That would be pretty progressive. I mm-hmm. think yeah. it'd be pretty dope. Um, if he said something about that, I think he'd get a lot more votes. Or mm-hmm. definitely the black vote. But like I would be in support of that because that would be like progressive in general. Mm-hmm. You know, that would be combating like all the conservative ways and all that stuff mm-hmm. you know so i think that's gonna be a big piece on where his campaign's gonna go yeah. um i am not i mean i'm i'm actually over it i'm not gonna 
this year or I think it's this year, next year. I'm not really voting. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to vote for other things, but I'm not going to vote for the President. presidential. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause like the way the, I'm a, the Democratic Party just comes off to try hard. Not even just try hard. It's just they kiss ass. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I'm not even kiss ass. It. It's just, know. I'm not really into politics. Like they that. all just sound like Biden to a point. It's just like they <laughs> expect it because like it's Trump. They're going to vote for us. Yeah. Instead of the, 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 it's not even just the black vote, just people in general. Like I feel like they understand like that. They know the stigma of being conservative or being Republican. Mm-hmm. Like they think, yeah. Oh yeah. You can only be, if you, if you don't, if you don't want to be Republican, then you're for sure going to be democratic. Yeah. But for me, especially after the last time I voted and I'm pretty, I'm a pretty young voter. I've only been able to, about three years, so yeah. in three years, so I've, Hillary wasn't the one out person I wanted, so it was. I felt I don't want to say I felt like a follower, but I felt like more of you weren't really supporting what you. Yeah, wanted I wasn't. To. Su- yeah, I wasn't yeah. supporting what I want or who I wanted like, to support. It was I just kind of like I don't want to vote for Trump. Yeah. So it's like I'm not gonna vote for Trump. Yeah. So this year I'm really want to take that like I want to take the power of my vote back. Mm-hmm. The. And just have, yeah, just take the power of my vote back. And, you know, it, let's say Biden, if Biden does come out with more things, like, oh, I'm going to do this, I want to do this, and all right, then let's do it. Then I'll vote for you. But as of right now, no, I'm not going to. No. I'd, rather, I'd rather not vote than vote okay. for someone that I don't feel Fully like cover, feel, checks off any of the boxes that yeah for me. I agree. Um, how do you feel about when people say like you're not only voting for yourself, you're voting for people who can't vote? Yeah. Um, I kind of agree with that. Like it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, I would still vote for the person I thought was a better candidate for the country. Mm-hmm. You know, and the people that need uh the help that politicians say they're gonna help with. Or I do, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I'm not registered to vote. <laughs> you got time. <laughs> yeah. People say you're in vote for people that can't vote. Um, I'm thinking of immigrants. Yeah. And both these dudes are, like, horrible for immigrants. <laughs> yeah. Biden definitely comes off. Biden has the record with Obama, I, I think, <laughs> for what? for deporting them. I think Biden oh, had... I think the Obama... Mm-hmm. Administration, administration uh, has the record for uh, most deportations, honestly, something like that. I honestly thought Biden was like a Republican. Bro, yeah, he's he's, he's he just about. Because I forgot, yeah, because I forgot he uh, was uh, Obama's vice president. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, he definitely comes off as a Republican. And I don't know if that's just because he's white or what, but <laughs> I don't know. Just all white people, you're all Republican. Obama, come back. We need you. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't. Nobody can do more than eight, eight uh, years, huh? Or two terms. No, nah, just eight years. Yeah, I remember people were floating around the idea of like, oh, what if Obama becomes Biden's VP or some shit like yeah. that? Just shake the whole game up. <laughs> nah. Wasn't there another black candidate this year? Like uh, during Trump, before Trump got elected the first time? I forgot his name. I know you're talking about, though. Um, but there was. There was. I, right, I forgot yeah. his name. Yeah. Um, I wonder why he didn't get elected. Well, Maybe because Trump was just doing so much to get people's attention that he just got it like he had it in the bag, like off the off the bat or something. Well, I forgot if he the the per, he just wasn't a good candidate to be honest. There's other better yeah. candidates. Um, it's also the political game. Like mm-hmm. you know, there's there's also that like Lobbyists. there's shit, yeah, there's still that shit going on behind the scenes that yeah. they do. Against each other, like like even the way like Bernie went out, like yeah. I don't know if you were like keeping up with it. I'm but. surprised that Bernie. What if like all the support that Bernie was getting on social media wasn't supported by actual voters? Like people were just like vote for Bernie, vote for Bernie, but like all it was most it's mostly young people, right? Uh, mostly young, yeah, mostly young people yeah. from all ethnicities. Yeah, what if like these young people were just saying vote for Bernie, but they weren't even the ones voting? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I supported. Bernie, but I never like shouted at him out or like publicized him because mm-hmm. I wasn't registered, even though I should be registered. I'm being a bad American citizen. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, 
Like, what if that's why he, like, didn't get... I, I feel like he had a lot of publicity or a lot of, like, support from young people. Um, He did, but there was also a lot of bad publicity for him. Mm. Like, especially on news. Um, I would always see clips on... um, yeah, little, like, little things, like, with the Bernie thing. It reminds me of how big... So how much bigger society is, especially in just the yeah. United States. Like yeah. you have younger people who are really a lot more on social media, and mm-hmm. you have a lot of older parents, like like parents who are on news still. Yeah, there's also a lot of young young people that are racist. Yeah, that, that too. Like, like, yeah, like so there's I, still I, stuff I, like that. I forget about that. But with, I'm like, thinking the, like all brother. young people are gonna vote for Bernie <laughs> for some reason. Nah, but and it's also just that socialist image that they gave him. Yeah. Like, it's just always a communist. Oh, this is that. And then that scares yeah. the shit out of a bunch of people. But, like, the way Biden won, like, he won the South. Mm-hmm. Like, he, yeah. like, the way he said, he's like, I knew once I got South Carolina, like, I'd do it. But even in South Carolina, I think it showed that Bernie got more of the younger black vote. Mm-hmm. So that just shows, like, the data of older black, the older black community is voting for Biden. And they That's are weird. putting their voting heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so... People that are against the socialist slash communist like idea are kind of kind of believe in the structure, you know, like the structure, like the systematic. Uh, I feel like they believe in systematic oppression uh, to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. If they uh, if they don't believe in socialism, because with socialism it's like everybody's kind of equal, like more so, right? Mm-hmm. Just people yeah. don't like. I think a big thing I've heard. Of people, why people don't like socialism, because social. I mean, I, I don't want to put socialism slash communism because they're different. It would. It's it. it they're 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 pretty different. Mm-hmm. Um, but with socialism, a lot of people say they don't want to make as much money as. This is a big example people use. Yeah. I don't want to make the same exact money that janitors make when. Yeah. I am a CEO or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's that should stay how it is. But that's not that's not exactly how. It works. Yeah, I agree. Like, you get, it, it, it's really not exactly how that works at all. <laughs> like, you can still have your nice, like, I, the way I see it is you can still have your nice houses, nice yeah. cars and everything. You're just going to get taxed. You're going to be giving mm, okay, more money yeah. back into this country that's going to go into everybody else's. Yeah. Like, a lot of people, they, they don't want to get, a big thing people say is I don't want to give other people, like, freelancers free money. Yeah, they just that don't, they don't deserve. They're just scared of that separation being taken away. Like, they like want that, that privilege. I feel yeah, like it's like they, a privilege type. Yeah, kind of like what you said, like separation, status, but like that yeah. status, that privilege. Like, yeah, they, and I feel like they buy into the system of capitalism so bad. Yeah. That's why I feel like a lot of people here can't accept a socialist. Because they're enjoying it so much, and they don't give a shit about the people that are getting fucked by capitalism. I mean, people just enjoy it until they're not benefit beneficiaries of it. Yeah. Which yeah, we're really course. not. The biggest beneficiaries are the 1% or the yeah. wealthy people. That's true, yeah. Everybody still. Mm-hmm. Most people still. Go to work every day, even if they're making hella money, they still yeah, like have a schedule. But yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it's like stuff like that, and it's also just the scare of change. People don't like change. Yeah. People don't want change. Yeah. So, I get that, but it's also like at this point, something's not working. I my my, my my big thing is if something's not working, let's try something else. And if that's not gonna work, then maybe let's go back or let's try something else. Yeah. But yeah. About all, that's about all I got. What about you? Same. So uh, the last thing I want to cover, be real quick, um, and I kind of always forget. I don't know why. Living in California makes me realize. I think everywhere else is just like California. Bless you. Thank you. Um, everywhere else is like California. So like you know, well, like sometimes I forget. Mm-hmm. So like this news of Costa Rica becoming the first Central American country to legalize same-sex marriage. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh what. <laughs> Costa Rica's um in a United States state. No, I don't think so. That's Puerto Rico. Oh, okay, I got them mm-hmm. confused. Uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah, Puerto Rico. Um, so yeah, I thought it was shocking. Um, I think it's good news. Um, I was surprised it's the first Central American country. Because mm-hmm. um, in Central America they have a lot of prejudice against that. I'm yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's the sixth Latin American country to recognize same-sex marriage. To recognize it or to legalize it? Um, I think they're. I think they. I think the article means the same thing because they. Because oh, okay, after that, yeah, they say yeah. Ecuador legalized it last year. Oh, okay. So yeah. I take back my statement of it being. <laughs> I guess would. You, well, I feel like Latin. 
I mean, would you, I mean, it depend if you think Central America is the same as South America, if they have like the same viewpoints oh, and all shit. that. Yeah. I feel like they might be a little different. But what what can what is South America? South America is the big Mexico. No, no, no. Central America is Mexico all the way up to the top of, you know. Oh, South America is like Brazil. Yeah, Brazil, like that, Peru, that and like okay, Ecuador. Yeah. And all that, yeah. Yeah. So Central, Central America is okay, everything yeah, in the middle yeah. of that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, like, oh, it's only in Central America it becomes the first. Yeah. So, and I don't think they'll become the last. Oh, shit. That was the first Central America? Yeah. And then the there's five other Latin American countries that have either legalized it or recognized it. Ecuador legalized it last year. They got, wait, Ecuador, where's Ecuador? South America. Okay, Central Central America got sandwiched into legalizing it. <laughs> they're just stuck. They're just Probably, like, yeah. damn, South America, they're, North they're America. They're trying to hold it down. No, not saying, like, nothing's wrong with it, but, you know, they're trying to hold their beliefs down. They'd be like, <laughs> Bro, it would it'd be crazy, though, if, like, Latin America becomes, like, at least progressive with this topic, at least, with uh, same-sex marriage and yeah. North America is how it is, and... It'd be weird if Central America would, was just like, nah. <laughs> like, they didn't fuck like with They that just try to hold yeah. it down. Yeah, and it would, it would show a lot about, like, what Central America yeah. is. Um, They'd get fucking attacked. Damn. By both man. sides. Good shit. Like, he's at a sandwich. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, We're yeah. Over your shit, man. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's great. Great, great news. Um, But that's about all I got for this week. What about you? Same, yeah. Yeah. All right. See you, everybody. See you next week. Stay safe.